I wanted to talk to you uh, about defunding the police uh, and also uh, the people's budget. Uh, so you've been very instrumental in uh, bringing those things together. Can you talk on those a little bit? So let me say, because yeah. we fight so hard, we're always mad and sometimes upset. Uh -huh. Today is a great day. Y'all cuss on it. It's a great ass day. Hell yes. 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 Um, yes. So this morning, so yesterday we were finally um, invited to present the people's budget to LA City Council. We do have one council member who's been kind of amplifying what we're doing. So mm. Herb Wesson, who's one of the three black city council members, um, came out first in favor of the Black LA demands, then came out um, fairly supportive of People's Budget LA. People's Budget LA is really um, the culmination of five years of work. Every year we protest the mayor's budget, which every year spends more than 50% of the city's general fund on straight up police, mm -hmm. LAPD, because they have this expansionist view of policing when they got police doing everything that they shit they don't know how to do right right, like, right 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 so police are sitting up talking about they're serving as social workers and emts and drug rehab counselors well they shouldn't be because right. they don't know how to do those jobs they were not created to do those jobs and so we've been pushing back every year this year we were especially outraged because we're dealing with a public health pandemic with an economic fallout, crime is plummeting, why are you spending more on police? So this mayor tried to cut every other city department, furlough 16,000 city workers, most of whom are black and brown, mm -hmm. and then increase the LAPD budget to spend $3.15 billion on police. Ooh. So we put out, we said, we gonna do things differently. We're gonna put out an alternative budget we were invited yesterday to present that alternative budget, which emphasizes defunding the police. We presented it at city council yesterday. Today, that same council member who I mentioned, Herb Wesson, put forward a motion that says um, police will not be deployed for nonviolent calls. Oh, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. So Very this fantastic. just came out like an hour ago, in a right? Now, this is what he's putting forward. It's a motion he's putting forward. There are 15 members of the LA City Council. It has to pass. Right. Mm -hmm. So we got to work on getting it passed. But the end of the presentation yesterday, um, we challenged them and said, you know, whose are you? Right? Not just who are you. Mm -hmm. Who's are who's you? Who's are you? Mm -hmm. Do you belong to the LA Police Protective League? <laughs> Do you belong to your own political ambitions? Do you belong to your ego or do you belong to the people? Wow. And so we encourage them to take courageous action. And we see that this motion is courageous action and courageous action is happening all around the country. Minneapolis disbanding their police department, um, school districts all up and down the state and throughout the country, ending their relationships with police um, so those are the things that um, we're pushing for and we're really excited about. You know, one thing that um, people... Wait, hold on, hold on, Mike. Let's just recognize that for five seconds. Like, that is, that is incredible, tremendous work. I just want to recognize that. So I'm sorry, Mike, for, inter for interrupting, but go ahead. Uh, one thing that people um, have a challenge with sometimes is just words and, and, and ideas like defunding the police. Um, and you know what you just brought up was was a really excellent example of what what's meant by that operationally because it's not about you know completely removing uh the idea of having the government to to you know having an arm of the government that helps out in those sorts of situations it's about the style and it's about the approach so um like you just explained because the style and approach has been quite murderous exactly <laughs> Um, and, and what you just explained, um, police would not be called out uh, for nonviolent incidents. So uh, what, what, what exactly is the plan there? Uh, if it's not police to come out for nonviolent incidents, who, who is sent in their place? So this is the other thing, right? It's really common sense, right? Mm -hmm. That if someone is having a mental health challenge, wouldn't you want mental health workers to come out 
if that was the case, if they had deployed therapists when mm -hmm. Rashari El Mack was having a break in the Crenshaw Mall, they could have talked with him. They could have helped him. Even the security in the mall were saying, you know, we just wanted to talk with him. We just wanted to remove him from the mall. He did, wasn't really, he, he wasn't arrestable. It wasn't anything he was doing that should have been a crime. If we deployed mental health workers, Rashari El Mack wouldn't have been shot to death inside the Crenshaw Baldwin Hills Mall hmm. in front of hundreds and hundreds of shoppers, including children, mm -hmm. right? If we think about, you know, those kinds of things, if we think about, um, if we'd had social workers when Jesse Romero was accused of tagging, right? Then this 14 year old child who hadn't even made it to high school yet, it was the summer after his eighth grade year, would still be here, right? Um, if we think about Brother Africa, who was murdered on Skid Row, then don't we need things like, what if we had housing for Brother Africa? Exactly. Right? Then he would still be alive and they wouldn't have been allowed to steal his life. So we have to couple this call to defund the police with reimagining public safety. Mm -hmm. So we want to live in safe communities, but we know that safety for Black people has never come through police. Mm -hmm. Safety for Black people comes through building community resources, making sure that our folks have all of what they need and most of what they want so they can step into their fullest selves, right? And so we're saying we want a strong system of public safety that's rooted in making sure that we have what we need and making sure that we have solid communities that can address our own issues. Absolutely. That's that's fantastic. And from my experience, it's always it's always seemed that like in black communities, there has always been sort of a, a de facto community policing, you know, in some sort of sense where it's like people from the church, you know, like I, I remember people who own grocery stores that like they become pillars of the community, whoever and everyone gets to know each other. There, right. there becomes a, a, a trust, you know, and a communication that's different than somebody else with a gun coming in to do a job that uh, doesn't need a gun, doesn't need right. a gun at all. Right. Whew. Everybody had that mama who sat on the porch. Yes, yes. <laughs> Miss Rose in my neighborhood. And if you messed up, Miss Rose would snatch you up and she might give you a little whooping <laughs> and then tell your mama. And your mama would give you a whipping, right? Mm -hmm. But police were never called, right? Police weren't called for naughty kids who were cussing on their way home from school, mm -hmm. right? You got snatched up onto the porch. My mother was one of those folks. My mother used to sit on the porch and teach all the kids in the neighborhood to read, right? And what does that do? Like, they would hear my mother's car hit the black because she drove a real old Volvo station wagon and you could hear it coming. And all the kids in the neighborhood would run down to our porch and yell, time for school. And my mom would sit on the porch until dusk and teach hmm. the kids to read. Wow, That's wow. public safety. It's also beautiful. It's Very. also a perfect example of Black lives thriving. That's, that's, yes. that's yes. gorgeous. Yes.